Hi right, guys, wanted to do a review on this 3D printer today. I believe it's called the uh, A13 by CTC, or at least it, uh, the marketing material that I've seen where I bought this on eBay said it was by CTC. And when you turn it on, it does actually say CTC here. I'm not sure whether it's actually produced by CTC or whether this is a copy or a clone. Looking on the label down here, it doesn't say CTC again. But it is supposed to be a copy of an Ender 3 and in places I've seen it quoted better than Ender 3. But uh, I beg to disagree. Let me share my experiences with you setting this 3D printer up. Uh, some of the many issues I've had with this printer and how it compares to an actual Ender 3 which I think is what it's trying to go for here. Control is very similar, the displays are very similar. All the rest of it is similar, but certainly nowhere near as good as an Ender 3. So let's get into it. What's wrong with this printer? As you can see, I've got a good number of Ender 3s running here, flat out. And what's this? Uh, this is something else. Looks very similar. And this is in fact the A13. This one's currently not running, but let's take a closer look. Struder, very similar, or pretty much exactly the same as the Ender 3. This drive over here, very similar. We've got a um, USB, and if we take a close look at the Ender 3, we can see the primary difference that you can see are the, the bigger adjustment wheels, the Ender 3 writing. The rest of it's all pretty similar. And of course, the micro USB on the front there. Well, first of all, we have a look over here, and we can see that the build quality is not as good. We've got a massive gap. The um, printer itself wobbles. If we have a closer look at the front, you can actually see there's kind of a bowed shape to the bottom, so the uh, bottom piece is not flat, it's actually banana shaped. The box wasn't damaged, so that's how it came. The gantry here doesn't move smoothly, there's kind of lumps in it. See how smooth this one runs backwards and forwards? Uh, there's actually some problems with the wheel back here. I've adjusted it fully, but that hasn't helped because there are actually imperfections on the wheels. The other thing to note is that this bound over here, so the display was in the way of the head coming over to its full extent. So it was clipping on there and that will stop the nozzle getting right up to the edge of the build platform. As we come over this side, we can also see the uh, printer has hit the stop and the nozzle doesn't run along the edge. So I was a bit suspicious, let's get a ruler on here and have a look. You can see the actual build area of here is about 206, 207 millimeters across. It is actually quoted at 220, but it won't actually travel that far. It's even less if it bound up there. See how the Ender 3 actually will swing all the way over. So one solution was just to press that down, push it out of the way. And that will now allow a little bit more travel on the bed. And let's actually have a look at the forward and back movement here. So again, we can see the nozzle doesn't reach all the way to the back of the bed. Bring it forward and it doesn't reach all the way to the front. And the total length there is what, about 200 millimeters. So again, 20 millimeters short. Let's now compare that to the end of 3 forward and back travel. You can see the nozzle will reach all the way, actually further than the bed, and we can get our 220 to 230 millimetres travel. Right, let's have a little look at the start-up. So, the end of 3 starts up. Nice display, easy to read. CTC starts up, and the display is rather washed out and flickery. Um, shows it really bad on the camera, but you can actually see this with your own eyes as well. It's, it's very dim and flickery. Two side by side there. All right, let's have a little look at this um, machine itself. So the build platform here, you can see the heat pad underneath is tiny. It's about 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. On the Ender 3, the heat bed itself is full size. It actually takes up the full size of the bed. Next problem I had was with these springs. Uh, let me just look how terrible that bed is there, that heat bed. Awful, what's the point? Just sell a tape on there as well. Really poor show. Um, 
We'll replace these springs. Hopefully we can make the bed come up a little bit more. So here we can see the bodge job on the springs. I've had to put some other springs in there to stack them up just because the bed, no matter what you did, would come up enough to meet the nozzle. So we couldn't actually print onto the bed without modifying it. So here's a successful print that we've got from this printer. First things to note is you kind of need to stay to this small area in the middle where the heat plate is actually mounted. If you try and print on the outsides of the bed, it just won't stick, especially ABS. That just won't work at all, they'll fall off. Um, the other thing to note is the bed is not flat. It feels like it's been glued on there with super glue. I'm actually gonna peel this uh, build surface off in a bit and have a look underneath it because it is terrible. Um, yeah, it's just really not great. As you can see, there's like lumps and bumps and one of those bumps happened trying to take this off. But even around here, there's kind of bubbles and blisters under this bed. The gantry, although it's now tight, there's still quite a lot of wobble in it. And that wobble is actually coming from where this whole axis is mounted to the frame. So back here, there's four screws and then there's some rivets. And it's actually like those rivets are not done up tightly enough and the whole arm rocks against the body. It's very difficult to see it, but the small amount of rock causes trouble. The next thing to note is these dry wheels. They're molded plastic and they're terrible. They're lumpy, they're rough. As you move up and down these gantries, there's kind of like imperfections in the wheels, little bumps. You might be able to see it on this one around here. It's also bumpy and lumpy with bits left on it. And that just means it doesn't run up and down these gantries very well. It's the same with the one on the bed here. There's lumps and bumps in it, so the whole bed wobbles and shakes. Uh, it's very minute, but any minute wobble or shake will end up showing in the quality of the printed part. So you can see this part is full of bumps and lumps and all sorts of um, imperfections in it. And they're really caused just by the wobble on these um, axes. Now I have adjusted all the concentric screws. I've tightened all of these up to try and get this uh, running nicely. But it also seems like this pressed metal bar down here has imperfections in it as well. As you run your finger down there, I can feel little bumps and bends in it. And actually this one down here is the worst. You can see um, the paint peeling off where it sometimes binds, sometimes doesn't. Um, yeah, it's just really not great to mention is the amount of loose screws that there were so it, this was a semi-assembled kit there's far less assembly to do than on the end of three you literally only have to bolt this onto the base and plug in some wires and you're almost set to go so the assembly is very quick and straightforward if you had all the screws in the kit which we didn't so we had to uh, find some additional screws but even the bits that were fully assembled I've had to tighten everything so these screws in here that actually hold the hot end to the, the frame here, they were loose, so the hot end was wobbling about in there. Um, the screws for these here were loose, the screws for the fans were loose. Um, all of the screws in this extruder were loose, so this one on the actual wheel here, that one there that holds the arm in, they were loose. Uh, the screws that hold this motor in here were all loose. Basically, all of the screws were loose. The other ones which were a real pain to tighten were the screws on the bottom of this gantry. So on the bottom of this gantry all of these screws under here were loose and as you can see that wheel there is uh, really nasty. It's really got lumps and bumps in it and as you move this backwards and forwards you can feel all those lumps and bumps shaking the bed. So really not not great with quality or accuracy or anything like that so i think that's really it for the end of my review could i recommend it not really are they all like this i don't know they might have just had an off day at the factory i get the feeling this one might have been chucked together after the coronavirus incident and uh, maybe the employees working at the factory were kind of like you know i really can't be asked to be here uh, let's just get this thing chucked together in a box and ship it out as quickly as possible um yeah, it's a shame really because I would have bought, you know, 10 more of these if they were any good, but I certainly won't be looking at another one. Curiosity, I'm going to peel this bed up and just have a look at what's underneath it to see why we're having these uh, troubles with the bumpy bed. 
So as you can see, we've got a steel plate under here. Yeah, uh, the steel plate has screws in it. They're not flush, they're raised up. So there's a lump there, there's a lump there, a lump there, and a lump back there. The glue that they've used seems to have been hot glue. They've just squirted some hot glue on there and stuck this piece of plastic down. As you can see, the whole back is not covered in glue. There's only glue here and glue there. So this part of the bed just free to move about, lift up, bubble, do whatever the hell it likes. So yeah, really shouldn't have that stuck on there. It's not really a bed. What I'm thinking we're gonna have to do is use something like a bit of this um, fiberglass circuit board and then stick a new uh, surface down on top of that. Might rectify the problem, but bear in mind, because these screws are not flush, they're gonna cause your bed to be um, wonky. I think now we'll just have a look at this part compared to the part that comes out of an Ender 3. So here we can see the two parts side by side. This one here is made from the Ender 3, this one from the A13 can see there's uh you know they're not bad uh, neither part is bad but the one off the a13 you can see some skipped layers there also can maybe see the bottom is not flat and there does seem to be some more banding and kind of um marks you can see this overhang here is nowhere near as good the bottom layer is not great if we lay them down flat here on the windowsill we can see the one off the a13 is in no form flat along the bottom uh, you know side by side usable but not fantastic from the A13 hopefully we can get better from it but we've already wasted two or three days on this so most end of threes come out of the box ready to go uh, once you've assembled them well thanks for watching and take care out there bye